I'd like to welcome everyone to this amazing luncheon roundtable on the impact of transcendental meditation on overcoming stress, raising performance, and enhancing work-life balance. I have been, confession time, practicing transcendental meditation for 46 years. I'm 12. I started when I was, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't the idea. <laughs> and when I was talking to Suna and Gabby and others about, about the interest in meditation for the past, over those years, it was sort of horizontal. And now in the last year or two, spiking. And in talking with Ariana, the tipping point has tipped. How many people here have tried some form of meditation? Yeah. That which was unusual before is now seen as essential. And today we are very fortunate to have eight extraordinary women come and talk with all of us, and I'm going to be just the one token guy. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. The, um, talk about their experiences with Transcendental Meditation and how it impacts their own lives, per private, personal, and professional, and the research that's been done on the technique. This event is being co-hosted by the David Lynch Foundation, which has bought, brought Transcendental Meditation to over a half a million at-risk youth and adults in 35 countries in the past 10 years. And also, yeah, it's... And also by the Center for Leadership Performance, which is bringing Transcendental Meditation to business and industry here in New York City and around the country. And if I had enough time, I would be probably introducing just about everyone here, but there's one particular individual I need to introduce, and that is Dr. John Hagelin, who is the, if you would stand up, John. John is a Harvard-trained quantum physicist, and he has been leading an international delegation of scientific research into the effects on TM for over 30 years. And he also heads up the TM organization in the United States. We are going to begin, while they continue to serve, uh, with a five-minute video that gives you a vision of the work of the David Lynch Foundation, and then we are going to go right into our discussion. So if the lights could go down. Oh, by the way, I'm Bob Roth. <laughs> I feel like I know most of you. I'm the executive director of the David Lynch Foundation. And it is more than slightly unusual to be standing here looking at you and everybody looking there at the screen. But that's okay, we'll get used to it. So if we could uh, play this video and then um, we'll begin the proceedings. Thank you all very, very, very much for coming. I looked inside, I was hollow in the happiness department. And I said, I, I, gotta, I gotta get that. And so I started a transcendental meditation. A year ago this month, I was suicidal. I felt so low that I wanted to just not be here. I got pregnant at 13. My mom, she got deported two years ago. Sometimes I cry because it's, it's just too much tension. We were attacked at this place called Buddha. The first night, I killed 14 people. The number of women and girls who are raped and tortured and killed in war-torn areas around the globe is literally beyond comprehension. My in-laws turned against me. They tortured me, almost killed me. I always thought I sort of had a low-grade depression here, but it really was ever since 
probably 10 years old, I just really been miserable with being myself. I was just so frustrated, full of misguided anger. I didn't know where to direct it to. I lost four members of my family, diabetes. I don't want that to happen to my people. Sorrow, anxiety, traumatic stress, depression, hate, anger, rage, fear start to lift away. Life just gets better and better and better. But when it's calm and still, even what struggle becomes beauty. I used to say, I'm gonna get my grades up, I'm gonna do better. But yeah, it was just what I said, it never happened until I started meditating. I think every barrio, ghetto school in America has to have the fundamental right of having an opportunity to do this type of thing. Stay regular in your meditation. Don't let anybody take it away. And you will unfold your full potential. The kids love it. The kids in the West Bank love it. The kids in Brazil love it. I think this is what people need. They don't need high-minded talk so much as results. Speaking as a scientist, the amazing thing about Transcendental Meditation is the very well-established research showing that the technique impacts things that we didn't think were changeable. Since I started TM, my sugar's been where it should be. So I'm sold on TM. The initial research of the effects of Transcendental Meditation in treating PTSD offers so much hope better than many things being tried at far less a cost. Transcendental meditation saved my life. Today, I can say I am a meditator. I'm meditating uh, 37 years. It is the only time I have that stillness long enough that I, I open my eyes and I'm sad that it's 20 minutes later. If you take out time and just meditate and just let everything go, free your mind, everything will come together. Just this last month, I felt so much energy, it's been amazing. <laughs> All that feeling of heaviness, I can feel it melt away. It was absolutely transformational. People tell me, you know, you look very calm, you look very relaxed, and there's not a whole lot of craziness. I'm just sitting there, calm. You know, and it, it's surprising even to me. I have a lot of problems in my life. And Tim came into my life and gave me, like, this open door to something that I never knew it would be. Those days I used to cry too much. But now they, even the tears are holding. I'm great. It comes back to the core of who you are as a person and what you're made of, and you have to give yourself a chance. Real change for the good truly begins within. I want to begin with a short little working definition. Because we've all heard of meditation. Meditation has become a generic term, a generic word. It's like exercise or medicine or food. And there are many different types of exercise, many different types of medicines. And the example I like to use, the analogy I like to use, is your, to define TM, you're sitting on a little boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And all of a sudden you get these giant swells, 40, 60 foot high waves. And you could rightfully think, holy, <laughs> the ocean is in upheaval. But if you could do a cross-section of the ocean, you would realize that there are these little bitty 30-foot high waves on the surface, and the ocean at its depth, a mile deep, silent, quiet, unbounded. This is natural. This is equally natural. The analogy is our mind. Surface of our mind. We like to call it like the waves, the gotta, 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 gotta mind. 
Anybody have that? I gotta do this and I gotta do that. Gotta go there, gotta call him, gotta make a list, gotta find the list, gotta make a new list. I gotta get going, I gotta slow down, I gotta get up, I gotta get to sleep. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody have that gotta, gotta, gotta mind, gotta going when you gotta get to sleep and can't? That's this. But in Transcendental Meditation, we hypothesize. And this is a very important word I'm saying here, we hypothesize that deep within every one of us right now is a level of our mind that is already quiet, calm, settled, wide awake. It's there, like that depth of the ocean. We've lost access to it. And Transcendental Meditation is a very simple, natural, effortless technique that just gives you get a mantra, and you're taught how to use it effortlessly, gives access to that. And when the mind, active, gotta, gotta, gotta mind, starts to settle down effortlessly, because of the connection between mind and body, your body gains a state of rest deeper than sleep. And that deep rest, as we'll hear from our wonderful physician panelists, have profound benefits to health. One last thing, and then we're off. How the heck is this different from other forms of meditation? It's a good question. We used to think it didn't really matter what you did for 20 minutes, we meaning science and the general understanding, didn't really matter what you did for those 20 minutes, whether you just closed your eyes and breathed or thought about pretty things or whatever, that it was all the same. But now we know from brain research that there's three basic types of meditation. One is called focused attention. And that is your classic meditation at the end of yoga class where the person says, now clear your mind of thoughts. Anybody ever been able to do that? <laughs> no, it's very frustrating. That's like trying to stop waves on the ocean. And that creates gamma brain waves, 20 to 50 cycles per second. The second type, open monitoring, mindfulness. Anybody here tried mindfulness? Yeah, mindfulness is a wonderful coping tool in the middle of the day when you're feeling stressed, you step back, you count, you watch your breath. And that's like watching the waves on the surface of the ocean and that creates theta brain waves. Five, six, eight cycles per second, almost dream onset. And then the third is called self-transcending. And that's what we're talking about today. We're not trying to stop waves, clear the mind of thought. We're not just watching waves, we're actually dynamically, blissfully, surprisingly, effortlessly experiencing quieter levels of the mind, accessing what they call a source of thought, pure awareness, my own inner self, and the type of trans, and that creates alpha brain waves, which is great for restful alertness, great for learning, great for problem solving, creativity. I'm done talking. Our host, is a, one of the most wonderful women among wonderful women that I've met. Her name is Perry Peltz, and she's going to moderate this discussion. And Perry is a documentary filmmaker and public health advocate whose latest film is HBO's Remembering the Artist, Robert De Niro Sr. She directed HBO's The Education of Dee Dee Ricks and produced the narrative film The Knights of the South Bronx for A&E Network. Prior to her documentary work, Perry was a broadcast journalist who worked at NBC, ABC, and CNN. Additionally, Perry hosts two programs for Sirius XM Network, and Perry current, currently is working about, on a documentary about women peacekeepers from the United Nations and another about prison inmates training service dogs for veterans suffering from PTSD. And I'd like to ask Perry to come up, and I'd also like... <laughs> And I'd also like to, to invite, who's coming first? Ariana Huffington, who is the chair, president, and editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post Media Group and the author of 14 books, most recently, the F New York Times number one bestseller, Thrive. And, <laughs> another extremely wonderful person, and I get to say that word a lot, Pat Harrison. Pat has been the CEO and president of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting since 2005. 
Prior to that, Patricia served as the Assi Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs and acting under the Secretary for Public D Diplomacy and Public Affairs under Colin Powell, and she is the former co-chair of the Republican National Committee. Take it away, Perry. Thank you. Bob, thank you so much. And I think a round of applause for the busiest soulful man <laughs> that I actually know, Bob Ross. <laughs> And to the David Lynch Foundation, because um, not only does Bob and the foundation help all of us to lead more soulful and mindful and meditative lives, but also does such incredible work for people in need. And in fact, the proceeds from today's lunch actually go to help women and girls who have been the victims of violence and abuse. And I can't imagine really a better cause. So Bob and the David Lynch Foundation, thank you. And thank you for being here.